going guys? Welcome back to Basketball Down Under and today, will we see Kai Soto win the NBL MVP? Who knows? But today we've got the NBL and NBA season predictions, a video you know you got to see because BD Reports is on the case and when you hear it here, you know it's going to happen and you're going to hear it here first. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Now the NBL awards are a little bit different to leagues going around in the world. The NBL awards actually like to support and penetrate players to higher leagues. Therefore, MVPs, Defensive Player of the Years, Rookie of the Years, all those awards all generally get elected to players that are very good, maybe deserving, but need that extra push to help them get to their next level. Last year, Xavier Cooks was very close to winning MVP, in my opinion. Was he the best player in the league? No, but it really would have helped him try and get that NBA gig that he's on the borderline of getting. So bear that in mind, the NBL is not necessarily giving the award to the best player for that award, but rather the player that needs that extra boost for their career, or it might help the league, which you will see later on. So without further ado, the NBL MVP this year will be Aaron Baines if he plays the whole season. Big if, because I've said he's probably going to go to the NBA halfway through. If not him, we're most likely going to see Bryce Cotton. He was injured a bit of last year, didn't get a chance to win the MVP. This year, I can tell you he's going for that MVP, and the league certainly like to give it to him. Side note, potential for Xavier Cooks again for the same reason as I said before. They're trying to get him to the NBA, and that MVP award would certainly help him. The potential league standings for how the ladder is going to finish this season is how I see as follows. I see the Brisbane Bullets at number one, Melbourne United at number two, Adelaide 36ers at number three, Perth Wildcats at number 4, Sydney Kings at number 5, New Zealand Breakers coming in at number 10. That is the potential standing that I could see for this year. I actually see Melbourne United winning the championship this year even though I see them finishing at 4th. Rookie of the year, I see them giving it to Ryan Rupert of the New Zealand Breakers, once again boosting his career so he can hopefully boost that draft stop similar to Hugo Besson last year. Now, 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 the good news that we all want to hear. Sixth man of the year. Bum, ba, da, bum. Kai Soto, I'm telling you, if he comes off the bench, the NBL has it in their complete and utter best interest to give it to Kai Soto. First of all, we all know he's going to get absolute buckets off the bench and he's going to be unstoppable. And if he continues to come off the bench for the season, I can very much see him winning that sixth man of the year. And second of all, the publicity it gets from Kai Soto winning that sixth man of the year, first of all, helps him get to that NBA level and also boost the NBA level to the Philippines because there is a very strong fan base there. We can also then see Kai Soto winning their most improved player of the year award. I see the Kai Soto or Luke Travers because both of their careers will look really good trying to get to that NBA level if they get that most improved award under their belt. Finally in the NBL awards I see the defensive player of the year going to either Aaron Baines if he plays the whole season or Xavier Cooks but wow it's just such an interesting fact that the NBL is happy to give the awards Here not to the player money. that's most deserving but rather the player that's going to benefit the league by promoting it sort of thing or if it's going to help the player get to their next step. Now we're just going to quickly run through the NBA awards so I can sit back in nine months time and tell you I I told you so because BD Reports tells you all the biggest news in the game right here first. Here we go. Unlike the NBL, the NBA actually rewards the award to the most deserving player except for in one case, and you'll see in a second. NBA MVP, I've got Steph Curry getting that award. The NBA wants to help solidify his career being a top 10 NBA player of all time after winning that championship last year. This will be the cherry on top and put him into that top 10 category. Defensive player of the year, I've got Rudy Gobert, just another one to his list. And the only thing he couldn't defend was COVID-19. Sixth man of the year, I've got Jordan Poole. Rookie of the year, I've got Jabari Smith. He's going to be taking it personally that he didn't go pick one when he was meant to go. He's going to have a stellar season. And this is where it gets interesting. Most improved player award, but but. Jalen Green. Similar to the NBL where they're targeting a massive Filipino audience. Yes, he might be deserving, but it also will help with the publicity it will get through the Filipino community. Do I agree with how these leagues are handing out the awards? Yes and no. For a business perspective, it's great. It helps players, helps organizations get to that next level. But on a realistic standpoint, if the player isn't 100% deserving of the award, it should go to the guy who's most deserving. And forgot to mention, the Suns are winning the championship. And you already know, you heard it here first. So in a few months time when these leagues have done and these awards have been handed out, I told you so. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe. Share this with your friends and I'll catch you later.